Uh, I've just noticed we're a bit wonky, but we'll just go with it. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as you guys may know, it's Mental Health Awareness Week, so I thought I should definitely do a video to do with mental health. Because obviously it's been a prominent feature of my channel since I started it. And although, obviously we sh this should be a continuous conversation, we shouldn't stop talking about this stuff and being open about it. Um, and reducing the stigma, etc. Obviously this is a week where we're really pushing out the messages and the information, etc. So I wanted to be part of that. Just a bit of a disclaimer before I get going, in case I seem a little bit flat or lethargic. So Sai has had to sell his car and my parents are away on holiday. Um, Sai also is working seven days a week at the moment, which means I'm a little bit stranded. So if I need anything, um, it involves me walking quite a distance. Um, so I've just come back after a bit of an epic adventure to get Sai his um, birthday cake and birthday card for tomorrow while he's out. So um, yeah, if I seem a bit, whew, I am, <laughs> and that is why. Also, before I begin, um, obviously I'm just a blogger, I'm a YouTuber, I am not a professional, I'm not trained. So anything I say in these videos, any nuggets of advice, it's purely based on my own experience, what works for me. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you. It doesn't mean it's good advice. I always want to encourage you guys, rather than listen to us mere bloggers, um, to go and seek professional help, whether it's a counsellor, your GP, even someone that knows your personal situation a bit better might be better than listening to me. And of course, there's so many amazing helplines and websites now. And I'll put a link to my website, Sound of Mine, which has a resource page and it has links to loads of websites and helplines, all um, tailored to specific needs. So I put it out on Insta Stories that I wanted to do a mental health Q&A and invited you guys to send in some questions. So I'm going to go into my inbox now and read them. So here we have one from Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Um, so how do you motivate yourself i find it if it's not my cfs holding me back it's my mood and then i spend most of my life in an armchair and get in a vicious cycle circle that lowers my mood even further so how do i turn that around and get motivated hmm, that is a tricky one i guess i'm naturally at a slight advantage because i'm actually fiercely determined like i've always been someone that doesn't give up even when I probably should. Um, I'm referring to relationships there. Um, yeah, I just, I tend to keep going, even if it's not sensible, even if it's not the wise thing to do. Um, so I do, I'm quite resilient in that way. And I know not everyone is built that way or naturally inclined to be like that. So it might be a bigger task for you to, to do that than it is for me. Um, but I've definitely been in situations where I have, minimal motivation and do just want to wallow in what I'm dealing with and sit in a chair, stay in bed, um, not venture out, not communicate with other people. I've definitely been there regularly. Um, I guess one thing I do is I try and remember the last time that I did push myself to go out or do something despite what I was feeling like and try and remember how I felt after I'd done it. More often than not, I felt glad that I did it. I had a really nice time. Perhaps I bonded with someone. Perhaps I created a really fun memory. Um, so next time you manage to do it, maybe write down straight after how you feel afterwards. Like the, the, the positive feelings you had as a result of pushing yourself to do it. Or um, maybe look at a selfie or a picture you took on that day at that time that reminds you that you are really happy in that moment and glad that you pushed yourself to do it. But I will say that sometimes I think it's okay to have those times where you do allow yourself to just feel what you're feeling. And I don't want to say give in to it, but just, just go through the motions, think about why you're feeling it, deal with it. And then, because sometimes I think like forcing yourself to do something isn't always the best option. Um, and sometimes it can be just as sensible to go, no, that's not for me today. I'm going to look after myself and not push myself too hard. That, that's, a, that's an action of self-care sometimes. But I think also 
a lot of it is about who you surround yourself with. Do you have those people in your life who like encourage you to come out when you're feeling a bit low, who encourage you to give something a go? You know, those radiator type people, the people that are uplifting, motivational, supportive without being... Well, sometimes you do need a bit of tough love and sometimes a bit of a bit of a hefty push is needed but just those people that yeah might give you that nudge when you need it a little bit I guess maybe factoring in who you spend time with might be an issue I don't know if this could be an idea but say you set yourself like a challenge maybe three times out of the five times you're feeling like this you try and make sure that you try a little bit harder to push through it or maybe some sort of reward system i know it sounds a bit like something you might do with your kids but maybe if you like get through something that you didn't think you wanted to do or didn't feel up to then you go okay i'm gonna reward myself because i gave that a go or i or i went for it i don't know what do you guys think offer some advice to kelly in the comments below i also think about how lucky I am in those moments or try to although a lot of the time I don't feel that lucky when I'm in a, a negative mood and particularly when I'm in the mood that you're talking about but I do try and think about you know if I am capable of doing it today if I am physically up to it maybe I should give it a go because that's not always the case and I don't always feel up to it so maybe it's I owe it to myself to give it a go. Does that make sense? But I think it's also important, Kelly, to work out why you get into that mood in the first place. Is there something that triggers it each time? Is there something significant that happens that makes you go into those moods? Is there anything you could be doing to prevent that mood coming as frequently or as heady as it is? So maybe that's something to look into as well. Um, the other day, I, I was actually feeling like this. And instead of like churning out work or trying to see people, I did some meditation, um, I read a book, I did some like life admin stuff that made me feel like I was being productive still, but it wasn't anything too stressful or draining. And that kind of helped me feel busy, but not stressed, if that makes sense. And then the next day I felt more like I could then move into the next area, which is slightly more stressful productivity. Then eventually I was back to being normal level of productive, I guess. If you are struggling with stuff, but you want to be doing something, think of something that's not too daunting for you, like ease yourself back into it. So maybe just go for a little walk, maybe see that friend that you're super comfortable with for a catch up. I know it's go to the cinema, just something that's not going to be too taxing, but it's still doing something. Lily loves Lola. So how do you deal with a bad patch on mental health when it's related to your CFS and health issues? So I guess this is kind of similar. It's hard, isn't it? Because it's quite like a chicken and the egg scenario. You're never sure which came first and what's making what worse and which is the root cause of and vice versa. I think with something like CFS, ME or any of these kind of chronic illnesses, they're largely out of our control or, or at least they feel like that sometimes. So you sometimes feel a bit helpless and, and, I, and frustrated and obviously the stuff that happens with the, when you go and see the doctor and have and this tests that don't give you answers of course that frustration just um elevates even higher but i know this is cliche but i genuinely do find that talking to people that understand what i'm talking about um and the fact that it's connected to a health issue so obviously i've got you guys now that many of you know what i'm talking about so maybe i'd vent to insta stories and then maybe chat to some of you on the dms um uh, obviously there's all these forums now for anyone with specific illnesses talking about frustration again i think a lot of us get down because we still have the will in here to do stuff and we still have passion for stuff we still have interest and ambition and drive and all these sorts of things but sometimes it's our body that won't let us achieve those things or strive for those things and I think sometimes that can really get to you when you're already feeling a bit low and then you might just see 
someone on one of your feeds, social media, doing something that perhaps you would kill to do or really want to do or feel you should be doing at this point in your life and it and it's enough to just kind of tip you over the edge and um and there's nothing really anyone can say that's the problem because they can't say it'll be all right because they don't know they can't be they can't say oh we'll sort you out we'll find a solution because we don't know whether they will it's very hard for people to make us feel better and it's very hard for us to seek comfort from other people's words, particularly if they don't really get what you're feeling. At least if you're talking to a fellow Spoonie or someone else that's suffering with something, you at least know that they understand how you're feeling and you do get some sort of comfort from that. I have two ways of dealing with my really bad patches. Some, some days I just let myself cry, <laughs> if I'm honest. I have a good weep and just kind of just be miserable for a day uh, or more and um and vent and do like ugly crying and trying to talk while I'm doing the ugly crying and other days I don't know why I don't know what affects which way I go with this but other days I'm like right no I'm gonna do something positive like the other day I just decided to send some people some care packages just because relatively okay compared to some people I I want to feel grateful today I want to embrace the positives in my life sometimes I think focusing on other people and other people in need and other people you love other people you want to be kind to and show you love um, doing something for them can sometimes distract from your own difficulties and your own things it's like what Phoebe said in friends I guess there's no such thing as a selfless good deed because Obviously, it does make you feel better. One, because it's a distraction away from you. And two, it's nice to know that you're doing something that might make someone else feel happier and um, loved and cared for. So I'd also say if your mood is related to your CFS, that I know it's obvious, but get off social media for a bit because I genuinely think that, that is the worst thing for me when I'm feeling low about my situation or what I can't do or how unwell I'm feeling because seeing a bunch of very well people doing very fun things or making lots of money or going on lovely holidays or having the life you thought you might have but haven't been able to have because of your illness of course it's not going to do you any good and you don't need to see that constant stream and you don't need to I don't know you just don't need to soak that up when you're feeling like that anyway you're fully aware that it's going on but you, you just don't need to be constantly reminded so I would say log off for a bit if there's anything you can do even when your health isn't great that makes you happy do as much of that as possible I know I've a friend called Hannah who watches the videos and who I speak to on Instagram and she does photography even when she's unwell or you know has an interest in photography and that has given her a lot of joy and helped her stay positive over the years and then other people it might be drawing um it might be um needlecraft for you for instance um it could be anything but just do as much as that as possible because i think just even if it's not busy by normal people standards Doing something that keeps your mind busy or keeps it focused on something is always helpful. And also just writing things down. If if you haven't got anyone to vent to or you don't want to vent to someone, just write it all down, type it up if you prefer, whatever. Just get it out of your head so you don't just keep going over and over it in your head. Which I think if you are home alone for a lot of your time or stuck in bed you will feel very alone with your thoughts a lot of the time and if those thoughts are bad they will just keep going round and round and round and getting deeper and deeper each time and that's just that's not going to help you at all right another question so room with a view i don't tell my parents about my depressive tendency because i don't want to worry them um how do you deal with your parents knowing about your health and mental health they seem super supportive they my parents don't seem to want to acknowledge that I have a mental health problem or mental health issues. They're quite old fashioned, like your parents, they're around the 70 um, mark and obviously when they were growing up, mental health issues weren't acknowledged in the same way they are now. 
sure women were called hysterical um, and you know they had very old-fashioned techniques of dealing with people that were hysterical but they didn't have the open discussions we're having these days um, and all the different range of mental health issues that we have categorized now perhaps as well or at least we have a greater understanding of the differences now at least so whenever I'm feeling sad or in a particularly blue phase whenever I relate it to mental health issues they seem to want to just say oh you're feeling sad today or um, you're upset about something they seem to very much veer away from any sort of mental health terminology I guess or any sort of diagnosis and I don't think I've ever heard them refer to me as having depression or anxiety they will say things like oh she's a bit nervous or um, uh, she's a bit um, down at the moment so I don't know whether that's because they're upset that I'm struggling or have struggled and they are denying it for their own good um, because I think par parents sometimes wonder if maybe there's something they could have done more maybe there's something they did wrong why is she like this um, could we have been better parents perhaps they're going through those thought processes and therefore acknowledging that I have a mental health issue is uncomfortable for them and perhaps makes them ask questions of themselves that maybe they don't want to or that make them upset to or like I said before it might be just a generational thing although I feel like both of my parents have had some mental health issues they've never I guess sought help for them or got anything diagnosed so in their eyes I guess this is something they don't know about even though I would argue that and, and I guess anything that people don't understand they're a bit scared of a bit fearful of so they take a step back from it so I know that you said they seem super supportive and yes they're supportive in terms of they will drive me to appointments they will um, make sure I'm safe um, clothed have food um, they look after me very well in that sense but we don't really have very deep chats or open conversations about my mental health and even with my chronic fatigue stuff they they don't understand it they don't <laughs> they don't read up on it they don't every time I say this hurts today and I know it's a symptom of that they'll be like oh why is that did you pull something when you're walking rather than going oh that's because of that or if I've I'm getting some sort of reaction to something they'll put it down to something else do you know what I mean they always find something else to be the reason I completely sympathize about the whole not wanting to worry them um, being older parents and I feel that all the time I feel like a burden just being here because obviously this is their retirement and yet they're still in a way looking after me in many sense of the word and um, yeah you don't want to worry them and my mum is someone that takes on other people's stresses a bit like me I think we're both empaths um, and we get upset when other people that we love or know are upset and um, I see her sometimes looking really stressed and I'll say what's up and she won't she's just like oh I wish I had a magic wand and I know that's because she wishes she could help me and other people in our family that are going through stuff um, and it's hard isn't it because you you want to be open with your loved ones the people you love the most um, but because you love them you want to protect them as well so it's always this conflict um, but I think it is important that if you feel you can share it you do because the more often you do it the more normal it will be to to discuss these things openly and I think if you're having secrets if you're keeping things to yourself that's never healthy that's not good for you and it's just more likely to build up so I try my best personally to drop little tidbits in regularly just so they know and I think I think it's pretty obvious when I'm going through a bad phase because I'm very teary as well and they will obviously see that and sometimes I'm quite reclusive um, don't shower and <laughs> I think it's quite obvious when I'm going through a particularly bad patch I don't know about you one thing is that I I don't think I've ever explicitly said to my parents that I've been suicidal um, but I 
I've said stuff like, I can't do this anymore and I don't want to be here and or it's too hard. I've said stuff like that but I don't think I've explicitly said I'm suicidal because I think those words would just be too much for them to take on. So maybe a lot of this is about language and the language you use and how you, the dialogue you have and how you communicate how you're feeling and doing it in a way that maybe you know they will respond to better. But then I don't think we should censor ourselves at the same time. But maybe if you know it would make the experience easier for you and them, then maybe it is worthwhile just adapting the language to make it a little, little bit of a easier conversation to have. Oh, this is a long video. Isn't it? <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, if you have any mental health related questions, please do put them in the box below and maybe we can help each other out this week on our own personal experiences and say what worked for us. And then if you think that might work for you, you could give it a go. But you know yourself better than we do. So if you think it's probably not the right route for you, don't feel like you should do it. And as I said, try and talk to some professionals first, particularly if things have gotten pretty bad for you. Um, don't rely on, on some strangers online to help you maybe go and seek some professional help. Anyway, I hope this video is interesting or helpful and I'll see you in a video soon. Take care of yourselves and remember, I think coming online does remind you, if nothing else, that you are genuinely not alone and there's all of us are on some sort of spectrum and going through something of some degree um, and so we can share the tools we found we can share our feelings we can be a support and a comfort to each other and in turn that will probably make us all feel a bit better as well so let's keep doing it let's keep doing this and um, sending love to everyone